Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. There has been quite the outbreak of diphtheria in Nigeria in recent times. At the beginning of October, we had 8,406 confirmed cases across 19 states and the FCT. The hardest hit states are Kano, Katsina, Yobe, Bauchi, Kaduna, Borno, and Jigawa. A third of those cases were in five to nine year old children. That's at least 30% of the cases. About 15% of those who contracted the disease are 20 years and over. Diphtheria is a deadly disease caused by Corini bacteria, for which a vaccine is available for free in Nigeria at the level of the expanded program on immunization, or the EPI. When the vaccine is administered, the disease is reportedly no longer deadly to the vaccinated individual. My guest on Health Matters today is the Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Ife Dayo Aditifa. Dr. Aditifa is joining this meeting virtually from Berlin in Germany. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Diphtheria has been around for a long time. That's why we have a vaccine. It didn't break through. What went wrong? Um, good question, uh, Mary. The diphtheria is a vaccine preventable illness for which, as you rightly say, there's an effective vaccine. Um, and this is similar to many other vaccine preventable diseases like measles, like yellow fever, and the like um, vaccination provides protection against these diseases that are uh, caused by pathogens that are present in our environment all the time. So what vaccines do not do is eliminate the pathogens from the environment um, around us. What they do is to make sure that we have protection against them. So when you have a situation where that protection does not exist because vaccines were not received or vaccine-induced protection is not there, then you can have a resurgence or re-emergence of the um, disease in question. And that is the situation with diphtheria, where um, among um, all of the confirmed cases for whom we know their vaccination status, um, about three quarters are not vaccinated. So is it safe to assume then that in this area where the, where the um, disease is more prevalent, people are loath to take the vaccine? And why don't they want to take the vaccine? Uh, well, it's not that simple. So um, the, there are a few ingredients that need to be present for you to have a disease outbreak like this. So um, when we vaccinate children um, or infants, the aim is that you vaccinate a significant number of surviving infants um, in every year, okay? So if you have low vaccination coverage, say in one year, that may not necessarily lead to an outbreak. What happens is for every year when you do not vaccinate enough of a bat cohort, as that's the number of children born in that year, you contribute a number to a pool of susceptible people. And what happens over time is that pool gets large enough and then suddenly where you have uh, transmission or cause or uh, people have other risk factors like they're living in crowded, um, poorly ventilated areas, or they have other challenges like uh, uh, malnutrition and the like. So everything comes together to then make the situation ideal for transmission, and then you get an outbreak like we're seeing. Uh, now, as the report says earlier, five to um, nine year olds are a third of the cases and they are closely followed by those who are um, 10 to 14 years old. Now, what this means is that the, uh, the opportunity to vaccinate this particular age group was missed when? 20, 2009 to 2017, 2018. So this is not a recent problem. Uh, these um, susceptibles accumulated over time when we had, of course, very well-known 
and described challenges to um, um, immunization, which included um, difficulties in accessing essential medical care for security challenges um, and the like. We also had vaccine confidence, historical vaccine confidence issues that may have was associated with uh, uh, misunderstandings around polio and other vaccines. And so the, the, the unvaccinated population from that era um, are um, the ones that are largely affected now. As you know, our more recent efforts um, to address challenges with vaccination um, have recorded some success with increases in vaccination coverage. Uh, and this is why the younger people are less affected by this outbreak. Okay. okay. Unfortunately, so strengthening routine immunization at the moment does not address the gaps that have accumulated with unvaccinated um, people, which is why we are now um, working with states and through the MPHCDA uh, to provide vaccines for a lot of the okay. older age group. Let me quickly jump in there uh, and ask this question, just to clarify something that you said just now. Uh, there was a vaccination drive between February and April in Kano. So you said you're, you know, you're trying to... Um, trying to get rid of this problem. Did you see any appreciable difference in Kano? Um, yes, we did. So the, as you know, this outbreak started in um, December 2022. Um, and immediately um, interventions, there was an outbreak response that included reactive vaccination in and, you know, just around the communities that were affected at that time. Uh, and we did see uh, a bit of a reduction in um, in the incidence of, of new cases. And the, the recent uptick that we are seeing now in what some people are describing as the second wave actually started sometime after May and has continued to go up because, of course, more and more local governments uh, and areas of the country, uh, including Kano, where there are susceptible uh, populations were now uh, being affected. Um, we know from um, studies on um, antibody levels in the general population that there are large, uh, many parts of the country where um, there are what we call immunity gaps and populations that are at risk of um, even a diphtheria outbreak. And um, we are keeping an eye on this um, and hoping that um, you know, that they don't become, that they, in response to all of the things that are going on and the camp and, and the outbreaks in other places that people are paying a bit more attention to vaccination and making use of all of the opportunities that the government has provided to uh, make these vaccines available. And the vaccines are free, are given at no cost. Doctor, some, some of these people who don't bring their children for vaccination, are they the same people who don't visit hospitals for antenatal care? And then um, because well, of that, probably don't know about these vaccines. There's, there's, um, there might be a correlate, but it's not direct. Um, of, of course, health-seeking behavior, um, if you've got poor health-seeking behavior, you are unlikely to also receive um, um, vaccines uh, in general. But uh, pregnancy and delivery is different from vaccination. And um, depending on events that are occurring in the timeline or people's personal beliefs, you might have a situation where people access antenatal care, but security challenges thereafter prevented them from going to hospital or made where they reside inaccessible for healthcare providers. So that's not, that then is not because they had poor health seeking behavior, but there might also be a lot of people who um, will have antenatal care, uh, but have other beliefs or their confidence issues are related to vaccination. So um, then they might not respond as we would expect um, to vaccination. So it, it's not a, a dark, it's not a cut and dried relationship and many different things occurred in the timeline. You know, we're talking about 2008, 2009 to about 2018, that 10 year period, uh, parts of the country experienced different things from uh, security challenges to vaccine confidence issues and the like. So 
and it was not sort of in a straight line. Um, different things happened to different people um, okay. that contributed to the situation we are in at the moment. Let's assume you do get a handle on this. We hope you do get a handle on this. And uh, as many infants as are necessary for herd immunity are uh, vaccinated with the DPT. Um, the, the people who were missed in this 10-year period, will they pose uh, a challenge to the elimination of diphtheria? I'm assuming it's infants you are vaccinating, that's why. Oh, no, um, we are not vaccinating infants. We're actually vaccinating uh, the, the target population is um, um, zero to 14 years old. So we are actually oh. vaccinating the older children. Um, I, and this is being led by our sister agency, the MPHCD, working with uh, state ministry uh, of health authorities. So the pentavalent vaccine, which contains uh, protect against diphtheria and four other diseases is what is available and given to infants um, and, and uh, some of the older children. And then for those that are four and above, there's the TD vaccine or DT vaccine, um, as, as it may be called by some people, that offers protection against diphtheria and tetanus, which is being given to the older um, age group uh, as well. Uh, and we hope that um, by doing that. So there are plans do, um, at the moment being implemented um, to do that in, in the primarily affected areas and areas that are contiguous to them. But the longer term plan, as soon as more doses of vaccines become available, is to expand that um, to cover all of the um, at-risk areas as well. Let me just take a moment to appreciate the fact that you're extending your net right down to 14 year olds i didn't know that so this is this is going out to the public now zero to 14 you can be vaccinated um having said that um i'm a bit i'm wondering you know since it's a pentavalent vaccine or then at least it was three dpt we didn't hear anything about the other diseases. Why is that? We didn't hear about whooping cough. We didn't hear about tetanus, but it was diphtheria. Is there a reason for that? Uh, well, diphtheria is um, highly contagious. Um, it is um, severe. Um, it, it cannot be, in presentation, be sort of misunderstood or misrepresented as or manage as other common respiratory conditions. So, yeah, so we, we in, the, in preparation for the diphtheria outbreak, we actually had uh, preparedness efforts for diphtheria and whooping cough, uh, which is pertussis. And yes, we believe that there, is, there are cases of uh, whooping cough here and there, um, which people probably just manage um, as usual as a long-term or, or chronic respiratory illness. But the thing is that diphtheria is a severe illness uh, that will often um, result in hospitalization. And in the pre-vaccine era, um, when people had diphtheria, up to 10% of people died. Um, that's a bit different from all of the other conditions that um, are protected um, by the uh, that the pentavalent vaccine confers protection against. So hepatitis, um, you are at risk um, for chronic hepatitis B illness and liver cancer. That will take another 20, 30 years um, to manifest. Um, um, and then for hemophilus influenza, yes, if you present to hospital, you'll be managed for that and um, hopefully be um, uh, um, cured in time. But uh, for diphtheria, um, you need specific treatment, diphtheria antitoxin, um, without which the outcome will really be bad. Uh, um, and that's why, you know, diphtheria is a bit different from all of the other important diseases that uh, the pentavalent vaccine confers protection against. This antitoxin, it's the treatment, yes. right, for diphtheria, assuming someone does come down with it? Yes. Okay. So we're yes, going to take is. a short break now, sir. Just stay with us. Uh, stay with us also, viewers. We'll be right back after this. It's Health Matters.
Welcome back. This is Health Matters, and we are talking about diphtheria on Channels Television. Our guest is the DG of NCDC, Dr. Uh, Ifedayo Adetifa. Uh, you can call 0808-054-2233 if you have questions of, on diphtheria. You can also uh, send me a message on X at CTV underscore Marie or send me email moalale at channelstv.com while the program is on. So um, diphtheria is a really deadly disease. Are you thinking about non-pharmaceutical interventions? Because I understand one cough can cause the damage to several people. Yeah, so the non-pharmaceutical interventions, uh, um, you know, and um, are important for a range of um, conditions. And of course, we um, have co always continued to adv um, um, advise, um, you know, uh, cough etiquette, you know, hand washing, the need for sanitation and avoiding crowding. Um, there have been conversations about um, face mask use um, um, and the like, um, and which um, have, you know, their own um, benefits um, as, as, as far as reducing respiratory, uh, transmission of respiratory conditions uh, are concerned. So all of this continue to be advocated for, um, you know, to to help. But the main, um, the, the important response for diphtheria is to, one, uh, people to ensure that all of their infants are vaccinated according to the Nigerian Childhood Immunization Schedule, which provides for vaccination at six, at 10, and 14 weeks of life. If you miss those timelines, go as soon as you can to uh, ensure that your child is caught up with vaccination. And if you live in the areas um, currently witnessing uh, the outbreak for which um, reactive vaccination campaigns are ongoing, please make sure your children, infants, and all those that are even older up to the age of 14 make use of all of these opportunities to receive these vaccines for free. That is the sure way to protect yourselves now and in the future um, against this outbreak and, of course, all the other diseases that um, uh, these vaccines protect against. Okay, this, that's great, sir. Uh, we, we hope, we pray it doesn't spread, but um, just to be sure, now children have gone back to school. Should the teachers know anything? Should they be schooled in anything to make sure there's no spread within schools, even in places where it's not uh, currently ravaging? Oh, yes, a good question. As part of the outbreak response and with particular focus on the sort of the eight states that are high body states at the moment, um, part of our risk communication and community engagement strategies has also included engaging with, uh, with teachers and school authorities and by extension their students so that appropriate education about diphtheria um, and advice is given and hopefully um, as respected members of community and people that we hand over our children to be responsible for, they can give the appropriate advice to their students and by extension to parents um, to ensure that there is right, the right knowledge about diphtheria, the knowledge about the risk factors and what people can do to protect themselves. Okay, I believe we have a call. There's a caller on the line. Hello. Good afternoon, it's Ada. No, we're calling from just Plateau State. Hello, Ada from uh, My question is to the doctor is, um, you know, when you say the vaccination is given uh, between, that is uh, zero to 14 years, is it that the disease is uh, age bound? Is it that somebody who is 15 years old and is around the place where we have this disease, the person will not get it? And then another thing is, um, at a point, are people vaccinated? Because in the Nigerian situation, it looks as if we need to wait for the disease to break out. Thank you, Ada, from Jos. There you have it from Ada. Do we have... Um, the, yeah, go ahead, the, sir. The target for vaccination at the moment and in the eight states where we are currently conducting reactive vaccination 
at the zero to 14 year olds. Um, this target is informed by disease epidemiology, that is the people that are mostly um, affected. And of course, there is the availability of vaccines um, as well. So some form of prioritization is required. Um, as I said, um, government continues to work on um, um, sort of getting more vaccine doses. And as soon as those doses are available, um, the campaigns will be extended um, and um, other initiatives will be put in place to make sure that people who want to benefit from protecting themselves through vaccination um, can do that. But at the moment, we are, of course, targeting the zero to 14 year olds and even the um, those who by the occupational category um, are likely to be exposed to, to diphtheria. Back to you. Right now. And then the um, other, and, and yeah, sorry, the other ahead. question was about waiting for disease to happen. No, yes. we do not wait for disease to happen. This is why these vaccines are made available as part of the infant immunization um, schedule. So the important thing now to make sure that people are not likely to be victims later on or to be susceptible to this and other vaccine preventable diseases is to make sure that all our infants and children are vaccinated according to our childhood immunization schedule. Back We're to getting you. a call from Prince in Lagos. Hello, Prince. What's your question? Oh, good afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon, Ma. Are we the doctor in Berlin concerning the issues of this uh, false vaccination of children? And uh, what can we do in order to make our own vaccine in Africa? A lot of advocacy is going about about these things. We, you know, majority of what they are putting into our the body of our children, and we we are we, we are no. no matter what we are going to do anything, we should start campaigning for our indigenous vaccine in Africa, most especially in Nigeria, because majority of these children being vaccinated also, majority of people are saying that uh, they are having, you know, effect about all this. Thank you, Prince. I'll <laughs> let the DG answer that question. There's so much inside that question. Vaccine, production, reactions, and all that. Sir, please. Uh, and Okay, thank you. I'm not sure I understand um, the perspective from what Prince is, where Prince is coming from, and I have not, of course, have no intention to to feel or support any conspiracy, uh, as the case may be. The vaccines, the, the federal government of Nigeria makes a tremendous effort with support from uh, partners and others to make life-saving vaccination available for children, um, for pregnant women and other groups that require them. These vaccines that are made available are safe. Um, they are not, uh, they are checked and double checked to make sure that they are safe. Now, if we're talking about um, the um, adverse events or all of that, yes, they are, and every, every mother already knows this, that for example, and, we, and, and they receive education about this. For example, a common reaction of children after vaccination is, you know, they might be irritable, they might have pain at the location, they might cry, they might have a low-grade fever and all of that. These are well-described um, after effects sometimes of vaccination, and they are very self-limiting, as in they occur for a short time and they resolve. And then we do have advice about specific things that can be done to alleviate the associated discomfort. Um, every medicinal product, regardless of where they are manufactured, you know, whether we manufacture DPT or pentavalent vaccine ourselves or is done, they have the potential to have um, adverse events, even if they are mostly mild, uh, uh, they are there and um, can occur um, when um, vaccines or medicines are administered. Thank Back you to. so much, sir, for this uh, enlightening meeting and all the information that you have given concerning DPT. It's been great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for all you do. And thank you for being on the show and all the calls.
Thank you for your call, Prince. Your call, Ada. Let's do it again next week. Have a lovely day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.